This is Dangerous Things, a biohacking company run out of a garage in Mount Vernon, Washington, started by Emil Gofstra, a pioneer of RFID implants since the mid-2000s. Motherboard traveled to Dangerous Things Garage headquarters to get a peek at some of Emil's new projects, including an exclusive first look at a never-before-seen prototype, the world's first implant-activated smart gun. This is just a gun you buy from the gun store, and what you've added to it is just the implant in your hand, and what else? And inside of here, there's a reader assembly and an antenna assembly. So when I grip the weapon, it reads the implant and unlocks the trigger. So if I try to pull the trigger, because I have no implant, it theoretically should not fire, right? Correct. And yeah, it definitely does not pull the trigger. Uh, safety's not on or anything, right? Nope. So and then when you try, so then if I grab the weapon, Will you consider yourself a gun guy, or are you kind of only doing this, you know, as like a, a proof of concept from the biohacking end of things? I wouldn't say I'm a gun enthusiast. Operated correctly by, you know, sane people, they're fine. But you know, to to be able to in the state of Washington. Uh, go into the gun store, hand over my license, and 15 minutes later, walk out with this. You know, it's not, not e exactly the best system um, to just kind of allow people to purchase these willy-nilly. But um, uh, that's why I think the smart gun uh, concept is important, uh, because eventually you know, we'll be able to actually uh, control who is able to operate the weapon once it leaves the store, and that, I think that's important. Is there anyone else doing RFID smart gun stuff? Uh, they're doing it with different kinds of technologies. Implants or sure. no? This is uh, this is world first. The biggest argument against say, uh, smart guns is that um, you know when you need it, uh, then it's not going to function correctly. You know the wristband's not going to be on or not work. The fingerprint reader's not going to work. So you know we're trying to jump over those hurdles and and solve the problem in a way that you can't forget your activation token. Right? You, it's it's there. It's readable by the weapon, and it just it'll work. Does it run on batteries? Yeah, there's a, there's a power source inside. So what happens when the battery on the receiver dies and someone like myself without an implant picks up the gun and tries to fire it, would it work? You could have it do what's called fail safe or fail secure. And um, in a gun context, fail safe would be the trigger is unlocked. Fail secure would mean the trigger remains locked. And there might even be an option for allowing the owner to select fail safe or fail secure. You know, RFIDs have been around for a while, but here is a new obviously controversial use. Yeah, it's two old technologies this. coming together in a new way, so. The next step for Amel is meeting with gun manufacturers. Uh, it's just a prototype. It's an example of what could uh, be possible. So um, maybe one day we'll be working with uh, weapons manufacturers and, and uh, you know, taking our brand of smart gun to, to the market. The assumption is that the fundamental gun owner is not uh, aligned with the thought of getting an implant. Uh, I mean, most, most of the time it's, uh, you know, people concerned with, um, you know, chips being somehow associated with the government or government control um, are usually pretty enthusiastic gun owners as well. So um, the, the, the combination of uh, needing an implant to operate your weapon is uh, probably, um, it might have some challenges. The issue is the fact that a gun is so rudimentary uh, in its design. It's very simple. Uh, it's a mechanical device that is just easy to make and, and you know, it's not complex at all. So introducing additional complexity into a system, um, there's resistance.